to another episode of Mathematics in Lambda class. In this episode, we're going to discuss an important application of Lagrange interpolation, which is uh, multi-party computation and secret sharing. Okay, so let's recall some facts. Let's uh, recall. Um, first of all, um, let K be a field. And let's take a polynomial um, in K of X. Uh, and let's say F is non-zero. Then F has, at most, Uh, degree of f roots in k. So this is our first fact or theorem, okay? If we take a non-zero polynomial of degree n, then f has at most n roots in k. Second of all, uh, and this is very important as well, this is a... Um, corollary of the first uh, theorem that we have, and that is um, a polynomial of a degree n is completely determined by uh, m plus 1 of its images. Okay, so a degree m polynomial ends up being completely determined by m plus one values. That is, if I have m plus one points, then there exists a unique polynomial that goes through those points. So this uh, is a very important relation. Okay, the degree of n and how many points do I need to completely specify it? Okay, and this in turn led to um, the discussion of how to build um, a polynomial, polynomial with um, prescribed images. And that's what we discussed when we talked about Lagrange interpolation. when we talked about Lagrange interpolation. So let K be a field. And let's suppose for the time being that uh, the uh, number of elements of K is uh, greater than M plus one, just for the time being. This is not really that important. And also uh, let um, collections x sub i, y sub i, or zero less or equal to y less or equal to n. A collection of all points in k squared. Okay, uh, such that Uh, the first uh, coordinates are all different. Okay. Uh, then uh, there exists a polynomial f in k of x such that f applied to x of y is x of i equals y sub i. Okay, we say that f interpolates the n plus one points x i y sub i. And with the uh, important distinction that the degree of f 
is n. So if you give me n plus 1 points in k squared, I can find a polynomial of degree n that interpolates those n plus 1 points. Okay, and this polynomial is built um, in a number of ways, but we're going to concentrate in a very specific way of uh, building f. That is, using Lagrange interpolation. That is, the polynomial f can be written as a sum from i equal to 0 to n, y sub i, f sub i, and x. Where these polynomials f sub i Take the value 1 for x equal to x sub i and take the value 0 for x different from x sub i. So in this way, the uh, observation, the polynomials f sub i of x behave like uh, the canonical vectors the canonical basis in Rn. So there are polynomials that take the value 1 at a specific point and then 0 for all the other ones. And uh, the only secret is how to build where the f sub i, f sub i the basis um, polynomials, so to speak, uh, are uh, constructed using the uh, starting grid. So we can uh, build uh, these basis polynomials taking, first of all, the product of x of y minus x of j for uh, j different y. This is a constant, okay, and we're going to invert this constant, and then we have the product of k different from i, x minus xk. So this is the recipe for constructing the uh, basis polynomials. Observation is that we're working with a field, okay? K uh, field, and the x is different, imply that um, these uh, subtractions are non-zero. So since they're non-zero in a field, they can be inverted. So this is a, this is a well-defined element of K. This is well-defined. So we have uh, done this in the past, and we have written uh, the basis um, polynomials in a very formal fashion. Um, this uh, Lagrange interpolation uh, polynomial uh, is unique and it's the uh, polynomial with minimal degree that uh, interpolates this n plus one points. Okay, so to get, to have an idea of, uh, to see how it works, we'll make two very, very easy examples. Um, example one, example one. And uh, this will uh, ring a bell surely for many of you. Uh, there exists a single line through any two points in the plane.
Okay, this is going to go pretty much like that. So let's start with R2. And uh, let's start with the starting grid, that is choosing two points. This is uh, two, uh, three, and this one, five, let's say five, one. So we start with the points two and three, and uh, five, one. We want to interpolate these two points. We know that there's a single line that goes through those points. So this line is actually the graph of a degree one polynomial. Graph of a degree one polynomial. Okay, so we need to find the equation of that line. Okay, so uh, how does a Lagrange interpolation work? So, since we have to interpolate two points, we need two polynomials. Uh, F1 that will vanish at 5 and uh, we'll take the uh, value 1 at 2. And then we have uh, the other one, and we have F2. It will vanish at 2, and we'll take the value um, 1 at 5. Okay, so uh, the polynomial that we are going to build is actually uh, spelt with these numbers and these polynomials. It's gonna be three times F1 of X plus one times F2 of X. This is the polynomial that we are looking for. All we have to do is construct F1 and construct F2. All right, so this is not complicated because for f1, f1 of x, we are going to um, remember. Okay, we need to take this constant and uh, multiply x minus, I, it has to be at 5, so x minus 5. See, this polynomial because of the way it is constructed, will vanish at 5. If I replace the x with a 5, I get alpha times 5 minus 5. That's alpha times 0. So f1 will vanish at 5. The only requisite that we have is that it, will, it has to take the value 1. So we need to choose alpha so that f1 at 2 equals to 1. That's all we need. Okay, so 1 at 2, we'll have to uh, return the value 1. So that is alpha times 2 minus 5. That's 1. So alpha is actually 1 over 2 minus 5, and this is minus 1 third. So we have already uh, constructed f1 of x. All right, so we already have this one. Uh, for F2, F2 has to be written as a beta times x minus 2. Okay, so uh, it has to vanish at 2, and it has to take the value 1 at 5. So F2 5 will have to take the value 1, so that is beta times 5 minus 2 equal to 1. Beta has to be 1 third. And this gives us f2 of x 
as one third times x minus five minus two. I'm sorry. So now that we have f one and f two, all we need to do is put them together and combine them, so we get a. said it was three times f1 and this is three times minus one third x minus five plus and we're adding now one times one third x minus two of course if we um, take all the multiplications we will get a degree one polynomial okay so this is minus x plus one third of x. This is minus two thirds times x. And then we have five uh, minus two thirds. This is 13 thirds. And this is the polynomial that we're looking for. If the calculations are right, this polynomial interpolates uh, to 5 and 5, 1. Okay? Uh, to 3. I'm sorry. So, this is the polynomial that we were looking for. This construction of actually um, finding the basis polynomials uh, can be extended to uh, many fields, okay? We have done an example with uh, R of X, okay? So in the second example, we will uh, work with um, a finite field. Example two. Uh, let's uh, find uh, f belonging to set 5 of x uh, of uh, degree 2 such that okay um, f of the class of 1 will equal to 4 f of the class of 2 will equal to 3, and f of the class of, say, 3 equals to uh, 4. Okay? So let's find a polynomial with coefficients in, in sets of 5, set 5. Okay? Uh, solution. Uh, let's recall, okay? Let's uh, recall that set 5 is actually the uh, set of uh, remainders of uh, dividing uh, by 5. So this is uh, the collection of remainders. The operations that we take here uh, are the usual ones. Class of n plus the class of n will be the class of the sum and also Multiplication is handled uh, similarly. We take the product and then we take the classes. Okay, so whenever we want to combine uh, these elements, we need to use those rules. Okay, so let's uh, let's start. Okay, so we need to um, need to interpolate three points. So we need a degree two polynomial, okay? Uh, points are class of one and class of four, class of two and class of three, and then class of three and class of four, okay? So we are going to uh, solve this problem by saying, okay, the uh, f that we're looking for can be written as a sum. It's gonna be a class of four times f1, of x plus 
the class of 3 times f2 of x plus the class of 4 times f3 of x. And this is the polynomial that we're looking for. Once we compute f1, f2, and f3, we're done. Okay, so uh, let's hear. Let's see how it works. Again, f1 of x is easily constructed. It has to vanish at two and three. So x minus the class of two times x minus the class of three. This will guarantee that this polynomial will vanish exactly at the class of 2 and the class of 3. Let me um, it's more space here. Well, I just need to move it a little bit further. Class of 2 times x minus the class of 3. And then we need uh, this polynomial to take the value 1 when we evaluate it at the class of 1. So what we need to put here is a normalizing constant. It's going to be 1 minus uh, the class of 2 times 1 minus the class of 3. And we are going to invert this constant. This uh, is well defined because all the um, uh, first components are different. So all these numbers are non-zero. And since we're in a field, we can invert. So if you bear with me with the computation, this is the class of minus 1 times the class of minus 2. Inverted. And then we have x minus the class of 2 times x minus the class of 3. This is just the class of 2 inverted. Well, it so happens that the class of 2, when we uh, invert it in set 5, is actually the class of 3. And this is so because when we multiply these guys, we get the class of 6, which is actually uh, 1. Okay, 6 has remainder 1 when we divide it by 5, so the class of 2 and the class of 3 are inverses. Uh, so what we get here is the class of 3 times these part. Uh, once we get this, we just multiply out everything, and uh, we get a proper polynomial. x squared minus uh, class of 5x plus the class of 6. And now, again, class of 5 is actually equal to the class of 0, and this guy is actually the class of 1. So multiplying 3, we, we get the class of 3x squared. Uh, plus the class of 3. This is the first polynomial that we were looking for. It's the first basis polynomial. Okay. Um, for the second one, it's pretty much the same. How do we think of f2? Okay. f sub 2 will have to vanish at, at 1, and then it has to vanish at 3. Okay, so it is easy to construct x minus the class of 1 times x minus the class of 3. And then it has to take the value 1 when we evaluate at the class of 2. Class of 2 minus the class of 1, class of 2 minus the class of 3. And then we invert. If you bear with me with the computations, this is the class of 1 times the class of minus 1. Okay, the class of minus 1 is actually the class of 4, because when we take uh, minus 1 and we add 5, we get the class of 4. So this is the inverse of the class of 4, x minus class of 1, x minus the class of 3. So now we need to find the inverse of the class of 4. And if you take a look, this is the class of 16, which modulo 5 is actually 1. 
So four is its own inverse. This is the class of four. All right. And uh, expanding the product, what we get, it's not a very complicated thing. It ends up being class of four. And now we have x squared minus four class of four x uh, plus the class of three. Minus the class of four can be uh, thought as the class of one. And then when we multiply everything out, four times three is 12, so that's the class of two multiple five. And this is the second basis polynomial. Finally, third, it has to vanish at one and it has to vanish at two. All right, so we at one and two. So this is not complicated. X minus one, X minus two in classes. And then it has to take the value one when we um, plug in the class of three. So it will end up being three minus one, three minus two, and we invert. This is the class of 2 times the class of 1. We invert it. Um, times x minus 1, x minus 2. And this will be just uh, the inverse of the class of 2, which is the class of 3. We already know that. And when expanding, uh, this is what we get. Minus the class of three is actually the class of two. And uh, multiplying out class of three times x squared, the class of one times x plus the class of one. And this is the third polynomial that we were looking for. All right. So the recipe is uh, quite straightforward. Obviously, the, there's, there are plenty of options of computing given a, a certain starting grid. There are many software options to build these polynomials, and uh, they are not complicated to, to make. OK, so lastly, We just uh, plug everything in. Class of four times F1, the class of three times F2, the class of four times F3. Putting everything together, uh, yields uh, the desired polynomial. Okay, and this is a degree two polynomial. And interpolates these three points. Okay, so how do we use this? What's the use of actually doing Lagrange interpolation? And um, this goes to secret sharing and uh, multi party uh, computation. And this approach of uh, um, this outlook for this problem uh, came from uh, Shamir in 1979. He wrote a very beautiful paper explaining how to um, share a secret uh, with uh, many parties in a very specific way using Lagrange interpolation. Uh, say, uh, agent. A has a secret, and uh, wants to share it, but not in a very um, vague way. We need to share the secret in a safe way. 
and F safe manner with uh, many other ratings so that the first condition uh, each agent on their own cannot retrieve secret okay I'm gonna uh, share pieces of information in such a way that each individual agent cannot recover the secret uh, the secret uh, will uh, be uh, unlocked only when uh, at least n agents decide to cooperate and uh, no collection of uh, J less than N agents can retrieve secret. Okay, so this is uh, the protocol that uh, A wants. He wants to share a secret with many people in the way, in a way uh, that individually those agents cannot retrieve the secret. They need to cooperate to, un to unlock the secret. And they need to cooperate uh, getting together at least n pieces of the individual information that they have. Okay, so uh, the way of doing this uh, goes back to uh, Shamir. And uh, the idea is quite simple and pretty astonishing. So there's a protocol on how to do this, okay? Um, suppose the, uh, the secret is an element, it's an element. of a field uh, K. Um, suppose, furthermore, uh, that um, the field K has uh, the elements and this is uh, greater than uh, M plus one. And that we are requiring N agents to cooperate. So the field that we need needs to have uh, more than M plus one elements if we want to share the secret with N agents, okay? So this is what Shamir devised. Um, Let's take, for instance, that we have two copies of a K, field K. This is just a scheme, right? And let's suppose that this point here, zero, uh, Y zero is the secret. That A wants to share. Okay, so the first step is uh, choose um, random and random points in K squared. So Shamir says, okay, take. Uh, and more random points in this case n equals to 4 in this example 
choose n random points in k squared. The second step is interpolate those points using uh, Lagrange. If the uh, uh, purple points are random, then what we have is a random polynomial interpolated split P, interpolating those uh, n plus 1 points. The degree of P is actually n. Okay? And uh, P interpolates n plus 1 points. It is the only polynomial of degree n that actually does that. And since uh, these random points were taken obviously randomly, uh, P can be considered random. Now we are going to hand out the information to the agents, okay? So what's coming next is how, the, how we distribute these shares of the secret, okay? Uh, suppose we uh, want to hand out uh, our pieces of information. So uh, choose uh, our random uh, elements, non-zero elements of uh, K, random non-zero elements of uh, K. And now we're going to hand the pairs uh, X of R, P evaluated at uh, XR to the Rth agent. Okay. So what we have now is that from the um, from the random polynomial, all of the agents uh, C okay, let me copy this I can copy. Let's do it again. So from the uh, uh, random polynomial, what we have, this was uh, 0 comma y0, and then we had something like this. In this random curve, um, at this point, we had n equal to 4. And let's say that we are um, having six agents. Okay, so we need to take six uh, random points in this curve. And we're handing out uh, these pairs. So each agent uh, by themselves, they do not know which polynomial that point belongs to. Say you have the sixth, this is the, de the data that the sixth agent has. All that this agent sees is this point. So he doesn't know if the polynomial is a purple one or is the light blue one. The agent doesn't know. Uh, if he gets together with the fifth agent, between the two, they don't know if they come from the polynomial in purple or if they come from the polynomial in uh, pink. Okay, 
they need exactly n agents to get together. In this case, four agents need to cooperate to sort out P. And when they have P, they can evaluate P at zero and they can retrieve um, the secret. In this case, n agents need to cooperate and uh, do Lagrange interpolation again to recover P and then take P at zero. So this is the big scheme of how uh, we can share a secret with uh, many agents. Okay, and uh, uh, we were saying we're sharing a secret, but we can also uh, divide a computation. We can give many agents uh, little pieces of a computation and they can compute together an unknown result for each of them. Okay, so this is how Lagrange interpolation actually works. Okay. Uh, the magic of the polynomials, the, the moral story, is that a polynomial is an object that uh, is uh, completely determined by a finite set of constant set of constants whether it's their coefficients or um, by using interpolation points but a polynomial is defined by a finite set of constants and at the same time it defines a function over a possibly infinite set, which is the base field. So to know a polynomial is to know m plus 1 constants. If we know m plus 1 constants, we know a degree n polynomial fully. And not only that, we know what value it takes at an infinity of other uh, places. So a polynomial is a, is a very useful object. Okay. Um, the idea of uh, interpolation and having partial information was also used by Reed and Solomon because uh, since a polynomial can be fully recovered uh, by m plus 1 points uh, if we send a long list of values of a polynomial we can recover the polynomial completely just by knowing m plus 1 points so it doesn't matter if we lose some of those values along the way. If we can keep and we can keeply save n plus one values, we can recover all of the polynomial. Okay, so um, the um, the place to go to is uh, Shamir. It's a very important paper uh, in the theory of information. And it showcases a very basic uh, result of uh, algebra, and it uses it in a very elegant way. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.